Randy the Natural Couture, a UFC Hall of Famer and former heavyweight and light heavyweight champion. Before he started freestyle fighting, he was also a Pan-American Greco-Roman wrestling champion. Greco-Roman wrestling is unique in that it bans any holds below the waist, forcing the wrestlers to use upper body clinching techniques to control the opponent and secure takedowns. Now Randy was able to take this experience with upper body clinching and combined it with striking to help pioneer a tactic known as dirty boxing. So called because many of the techniques used would be illegal in regular boxing. And in this study, we're going to be taking a look at some of those techniques and tactics that Randy used in his dirty boxing style. The first step to dirty boxing is to enter into clinching range with your opponent. And Randy has a few main techniques which he used to do this safely. You can see here that after weaving, he throws a left hook and leaves it attached to the back of the neck, establishing the clinch from where he can throw uppercuts. This left hook was his favorite method of establishing his dirty boxing clinch. He would throw it either as a lead or work it into combinations, and instead of retracting it back to his forehead like a normal hook, he'd leave it hanging and convert it into a single collar tie. Another way he would enter would be to slip his opponent's punch to the outside while moving in to establish the clinch. As he was lowering his level, he would often end up with an underhook or an underhook and a collar tie when using this entry. While this is a defensive or reactive entry, he would often also throw a jab as he slipped to help him enter the clinch and blend the boxing and clinch work together. When he did lower his level, he never dropped to his knee like in a traditional wrestling shot, but rather bent at the waist while keeping his head roughly in the center of his opponent's chest, which helped establish the clinch and avoid counter knees. And he would also use an overhand right as a big shot to throw while stepping in on his opponent. He would then sometimes leave the right hanging to convert to a collar tie, like he does with the left hook. And here against Tim Sylvia, he used a hand trap before following through with his right hand and a left hook to establish the clinch, which he used twice in that fight. Once in the clinch, a key component to remaining on the offensive is to have your opponent off balanced at all times. This is forcing them to circle while cutting angles and pushing and pulling on them to shift their weight from one side to another, never allowing them to set their feet properly. While a lot of the off balancing techniques is subtle shifts and manipulations of the opponent's weight, a more obvious one is the ear rip, where Randy reaches and grabs the opponent's ear while pulling it across their body to unbalance them. It's a sharp, jolting movement normally executed from the collar tie. Another obvious example of off-balancing is Randy's use of the snapdown, which as he's putting weight on the back of the opponent's head, if he breaks their posture, he'll move into a front headlock position, which he can then start to grapple from. Another key component in dirty boxing is constant pummeling. You see here as Randy has a left collar tie and punches, he'll swap to a right collar tie to punch, and then swap back to his left collar tie. As he's punching, he's constantly changing grips from collar ties to underhooks while throwing hooks and uppercuts, which keeps his opponent constantly reacting to your movement. It serves the same purpose as off-balancing in that you want to keep your opponent constantly guessing about what strike is going to be thrown next. And Randy became a master at using his punches to constantly pummel through different grips. For instance, here he shoulder bumps to create room for an uppercut, which he pummels through for an underhook, as he pulled his underhook out on the other side to throw punches. One of the main positions to work from is the single collar tie. This is with the hand on the back of the head of the opponent, with the elbow driving into their chest. This puts a lot of weight onto the back of their neck while leaving you a free hand to punch with. Ideally with the single collar tie, you're able to break the opponent's posture enough that their head starts facing down towards the mat. This means that they're not able to see where your punches are coming from as you throw short shots from the hip. The two main strikes you're going to have from here is the uppercut and the hook. Ideally you're going to be alternating between them, again to keep the opponent guessing and reacting to what strike you're going to throw, but also as you throw the uppercut, it's likely to lift their head up, which sets it up for a hook to come and connect over the top of their shoulder. And again, on top of alternating between punches, Randy would always alternate between grips and change collar ties from one side to another before resuming punching. 
And while the hooks and uppercuts are thrown with power, Randy was never really looking for a single knockout shot. Rather, he's looking to build up volume and wear the opponent out with attrition over time. And it's this focus on attrition, along with the off-balancing techniques of the single collar tie, including being extra heavy on the back of the opponent's head, making them carry a weight to a point where they may find it difficult to move their feet, that made the dirty boxing technique so effective. And here we see a body shot to an uppercut, as Randy pummels through with his collar tie to change to the right side, while scoring another uppercut with his left, then moving to the inside and finishing with a left hook over the top. Overall, Randy was able to score a lot of damage from the single collar tie. The other main position Randy would work from is the single underhook. This is grabbing high on the opponent's shoulder while leaving the other hand free to strike and pummel. Another consideration from the single underhook is to have good head position. This is with your forehead driving across the opponent's chin, never allowing them to look towards you. That head position can act as a frame between you and your opponent to create more distance to throw strikes. Otherwise, Randy would use that single underhook to turn or bump his opponents to create that extra distance to strike, all the while focusing on keeping them off balance by manipulating their weight. Lifting his opponents up with the underhook in an attempt to break their posture was also another means that Randy used to off balance with the underhook. And while he would strike and pummel in to grab an underhook, it's worth noting that he would also remove an underhook to begin striking, preferably if he had an underhook and a collar tie. A great example here is while punching in, he secures a right underhook and establishes good head position. He then removes his underhook to convert to a collar tie before throwing a left and a right hook and then pummeling back in to finish with double underhooks. And out of all of Randy Couture's dirty boxing sequences, this one might happen to be my favorite. Let's slow it down so we can take a closer look. Randy begins by throwing a right elbow followed to an ear rip before throwing an uppercut and pummeling straight into an underhook. Then with the free hand on the right side, he throws a hook to the body and to the head. Great work. A tactic Randy would use to secure the underhook is as a counter for when his opponents would grab a collar tie. You can see here his opponents would get a collar tie and Randy would bump and pummel in under with his underhook. This would play into his strategy of constantly pummeling between those dirty boxing positions. And another thing he'd do with the underhook is bring it high and up across his opponent's mouth and jaw to push their chin away and exert extra control in the position. And now moving on to knee strikes. While in a dirty boxing clinch, punches are going to be the primary weapon, Randy would still throw knees when the opportunity arose. Although the knees weren't doubled up on and were often just thrown as a single strike, they did serve a purpose of breaking the opponent's posture, which could then set up follow-up punches. Breaking from the clinch was also another tactic that Randy would use to take the initiative in the clinch battles. Randy would proactively break from the clinch and use that opportunity to unload boxing combinations at his opponents before re-entering the clinch. As Randy would break from the clinch, the opponents could be caught with their hands still down from where they were in the grappling exchange. As the opponent tries to catch up, Randy would use that moment to throw intense, short, sharp combinations before re-establishing the clinch. And this breaking from the clinch really ties together the principles of off-balancing and pummeling that Randy used to always make sure his opponents were on the back foot when he was using the dirty boxing clinch. They never knew what was coming next and Randy was always staying one step ahead of them. Dirty boxing in mixed martial arts owes a lot of its notoriety to Randy Couture and his excellent use of it throughout his career. While other fighters like Jens Pulver, Matt Lindland, and Dan Henderson also helped pave the way. Dirty Boxing gave Randy Couture a style to perfectly integrate his Greco-Roman wrestling background into freestyle fighting. The importance of the off-balancing and pummeling techniques that Randy was able to bring in from his wrestling background cannot be understated. Randy Couture made sure dirty boxing was much more than simply striking within the clinch. He made it a constant alternating battle between the opponents worrying about strikes, grappling, 
pummeling, keeping their balance, all the while they were accumulating damage and having Randy hang his weight on them. And that concludes this study on dirty boxing. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave any comments you have down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and like and share this video. Also check out my website at sunnybrown.net and subscribe to my mailing list to be advised of any updates. Thanks.